Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is all about the luxury that is actually worth it. I have spent a lot of money on luxury in my time and I can't honestly say it was all worth it, but there definitely are some favorite purchases which I 100% think were worth money even with a very high price tag. So I wanted to do this video for any of you who are maybe just starting to build out your collection, maybe starting from scratch, really looking at the items to prioritize because they're just pieces that I have really enjoyed and I genuinely think are worth the money. So I try to take this from the vantage point of if I was literally starting with nothing in my collection, what would I go for and what would I really prioritize spending my money on? So I hope you guys enjoy this and let's get started. So the first item which I think is just so worth the money, I've spoken many times about this before, but it is a great luxury belt. And I don't think you need a big collection. I literally think if you pick right, one will see you through just so many different outfits and occasions. But I think these are fantastic for a few reasons because one, they are not usually as highly priced as some other luxury goods. You know, they're not as expensive as a pair of shoes or a handbag. So usually they are slightly more accessible in terms of the price price point, but they're also very easily transferable. You know, you can wear this over a coat, you can wear it with jeans if you get the right size, you can wear it with skirts and dresses. And it's a really, really easy, neat trick just to pop this over and I swear they can make the most inexpensive, simple outfit looks so much fancier. So I'm a huge fan of a great luxury belt, and this is definitely one of the items that I would really prioritize spending my money on, because I do think it allows you to get away with much cheaper clothing while still having that much more elevated look. Um, so two of my favorites, and I do own a few different luxury belts, and I love them all. I have a lot of love for lots of different kinds. I love my Valentino one. I have that in a couple of different sizes. My Tom Ford one, I haven't gone along with quite as well, but I do have quite a few different varieties and I think they're all great. Um, but by far my two favorite ones are my Louis Vuitton one and also my Saint Laurent one. The Saint Laurent one is a really skinny belt so I find this very useful for belting over skirts and dresses. Um, this one, the LV one, is a little bit more substantial so I can actually wear this over a coat as well. And I just love them. Um, the LV one is definitely a little bit more on the pricey side. But what I really love about it as well is it's reversible, so you do get a bit more bang for your buck. The quality on both these is fantastic. Um, as I said, the Saint Laurent one is much more accessibly priced, so if you wanted something that was a bit more reasonably priced than the LV one, Saint Laurent one I do think is absolutely fantastic, and it's really lasted very, very well. And they both have, and I've worn these just countless times, like they've gotten a lot of use. And there's pretty much nothing wrong with them. You know, they don't seem to wear too badly at all. There's nothing in terms of marks or scuffs or anything like that. And they're just such an easy way to dress up your outfit. And I do think it's really easy to get a lot of bang for your buck with this sort of thing. The next thing that I would really prioritize spending my money on is a great wallet. And I would definitely go for a compact wallet and a long wallet just because I know how I use them. And with these two, I pretty much have my bases covered. Um, I would say that I do use kind of smaller card holders a lot as well, but if I had to, like these more than cover my needs, a smaller wallet for my mini bags and then a longer wallet for everyday use. My favorite, and it always has been, has been Louis Vuitton for SLGs. I just think they're pretty much unbeatable in terms of the durability and the quality that you're getting. I do have Chanel SLGs and I love their little card holders, but I've owned a couple of wallets of theirs in the past and for the price, they are extremely expensive and I don't find them to be very durable. I do tend to go for the lambskin though, so maybe that's different with the grain leather. Um, but generally speaking, my preference is always for Louis Vuitton. I just think they are fantastic. The two I have here, both on Prant, um, this one is the long wallet, fits a ton, and then I do have the Victorine wallet, which even though it is very compact, actually has a lot of storage capability as well. This is my daily wallet and I couldn't recommend it enough, like it is truly fantastic. It has a gazillion card slots, which is perfect for me because I have a gazillion cards. So you have four at the front there and then you have four, at, you actually have six at the back and then six on the other side as well, as well as some extra slots. A space for your notes, a space for coins, just a lot of storage space in general. But it doesn't feel like a massive wallet, which I love and you do also have a pocket at the back. 
I've had this for quite a while now and I swear it looks good as new. Like I can see absolutely nothing wrong with it. Feels very luxurious and I just adore it. And then my little Victorine wallet. This is usually what I will take with me when I go traveling. I won't usually carry my long wallet um, just because I know I'm going to use a lot of mini bags. So my everyday wallet is usually something smaller. And this is perfect and you can still fit a very decent amount inside. Three card slots on either side. You have extra pockets there as well. A space for kind of notes and receipts. And then when you just fold it over, you do have that space for coins as well. Again, very neat, very compact. It does fit into most of my mini bags and extremely durable as well. I have had this for many years now and it still looks fantastic. I have a little bit of tarnishing on the button and that is pretty much the only thing I can see wrong with it. So I would definitely recommend these two, um, but regardless of what you go for, I do think that there is something very worthwhile about getting a beautiful quality luxurious wallet that you'll be able to enjoy on a daily basis. I use my wallets most days. I get a lot of use out of them. And every time I use them, you know, I really enjoy the functionality because it makes my life easier but I also just really enjoy the look and the quality as well. So for me, these are 100% worth the money. Cost per wear, you really can get that down because a wallet is something that you use so frequently and these do just last and last as well. So would highly recommend these two, um, but as I said, regardless of what your preference is in terms of brand and style, I do think that a beautiful quality luxury wallet is absolutely worth investing in. The next item I would 100% prioritize is a really great everyday bag. I think often there is the inclination to splurge on more special occasion pieces, whereas I have found that 100% some of my best value buys have come from my everyday pieces that I get to enjoy often. One of those pieces was my Neville. So I got this I wanna say almost 10 years ago. So it's been a really long time, maybe not quite that long, maybe it's like eight or nine years ago. I've had it a very, very long time. I wanted an everyday bag. This was my first kind of luxury everyday bag. I was a bit nervous about using it because it was so expensive and it was a great deal cheaper then, um, but it was still very, very expensive for me at the time. Um, but I got so much wear and value out of it. You will probably be able to tell um, it is definitely looking worse away. It is very well loved and a little bit beaten up at this point, but you know what? There's nothing wrong with it functionally. It's still very comfortable to use. And this was a fantastic buy and it's still going strong how many years later. I still do use this for travel as well because it's a really carefree bag and I've gone my cost per wear down to hardly anything I imagine because I have used it just hundreds and hundreds of times. So that is definitely something I would recommend if you are looking to build out your collection. I would definitely say to look at items that you'll be able to wear on almost a daily basis rather than special occasion items which you know, you might reach for occasionally, but that cost per wear is going to be very, very high just because of the nature of the item. And along those same lines, the next bag that I would prioritize buying is a fancy but a functional piece. So here I'm talking about the kind of bag where you're happy to use it for a special occasion, um, but it's not so fancy that you only want to use it for birthdays, for example. So here I'm talking about a date night or just kind of going shopping for the day, like whatever it is, um, that's the kind of category of bag I'm talking about as opposed to like a clutch. And I think this is gonna look different according to your lifestyle, where you live, what you like to wear. So for some, it might be, you know, a small crossbody wallet on chain. For others, it might be a shoulder bag, but I'm really thinking of bags which aren't necessarily like, you know, a work tote or anything like that. Um, so for me, the ones that kind of fit into that category are, and this is one of my favorites, it is the Saint Laurent Puffer. So this one has gone pretty much constant use ever since I got it. It's definitely one of my favorite bags. I currently have my collection. It's what I've been using for the past month as well. I do kind of rotate in and out of my bags. Um, I don't always like to change them like every single day. And so this one I just had downstairs the past month and I've not really felt the need to change out of it. I just love it. I find it really functional and um, because the colorway, it works perfectly in summer, also works great in winter. It fits a decent amount and I like the fact that it doesn't feel too fancy to wear just during a normal day, but it also does feel fancy enough that I can wear it on a date night or something like that as well. So I love the versatility and this is kind of 
everything I like in a really, really functional bag. You know, I love wearing bags on my shoulder. I love the capacity, it's just perfect. And even though this is very fancy and luxurious, it's not so fancy and luxurious that I'm scared to use it. And that definitely has been true of some of the bags I have in my collection. It doesn't matter how many I have, there are just some which I'm a bit scared to use. Whereas that's not true with this and it also helps it's also very durable as well. So for me, this kind of ticks all the boxes. I absolutely love it. But whatever that looks like for you, whether that is, you know, a crossbody or whatever it is, I would definitely recommend something where you can use it for your special occasions, but it's not so fancy that you're scared to use it for every day as well. The next item I would absolutely prioritize is my Cartier Jeu and Clue bracelet. My love for this thing is well documented, but I've had it for, I think it's three or four years. Maybe it's four years now, actually. Um, it's still going strong. I wear it pretty much every day, not for the past month um, because Yoshi is teething and that just wouldn't end well. But apart from that, I've worn it pretty much every day. It still looks fantastic. Like it genuinely looks pretty much good as new. I love wearing it by itself. I love layering up with other pieces. Like it really is easy to mix and match. I love the fact that it can dress up other pieces so easily as well. And for me, this is just the perfect piece of jewelry, regardless whether it's this one though, or any other piece that you have your eye on. I would say to just make sure the style suits you in terms of the overall aesthetic, but also the functionality, which is a big reason why I love this so much. The fact that I can get it on and off so easily is a huge reason why I wear it so much. And I just love it to bits. So, Again, in terms of cost per wear, this has done fantastically well. I would buy it instantly again if I did lose it. I did actually think I lost it in August and I was planning on repurchasing it then. I just love it so much. Um, so yeah, would highly recommend. I just absolutely adore mine. Next up is my Chanel Jumbo and I really debated whether to include this. I actually wrote this list out before the last price increase. I've been meaning to do this video for a while and by no means was it cheap before that, um, but now I believe they're over £8,000, which is kind of a crazy thought. Um, when I first bought my black one, it was two and a half thousand, and it had just seen a big price increase. So I think before that it was 2000 So obviously a huge investment and they've never been cheap and now they're kind of in crazy money territory but if i'm being really honest and i was starting over i would still save up uh, to get another one again if the gray one was available i would probably save up for this one again um, otherwise i'd go for the black with gold hardware um, but i wouldn't aspire to have any more than one in my collection simply because i do get a lot of use out of these but i don't get as much as i used to because the price does kind of dampen my enjoyment you know i don't love having something so expensive on my arm it makes me a bit more nervous to use it and it's just not the same as it once was so I would definitely factor that into your decision um, if you have your heart set on a Chanel bag and you know that the style works for you and that is really crucial so I would definitely say to try something similar in terms of the shape and functionality before splurging this much money um, but if you know the style works and you have your heart set on it you know I would say that one is still worth it um, again I wouldn't aspire to have any more than that because I just don't think I would get the cost per wear down and as I said how expensive they are really does impact my enjoyment of them and um, so one would be enough um, but I do still think I would try and prioritize getting one just because I know how much I love it. The next item I would prioritize is the Burberry scarf. I love my Burberry scarves. I have quite a few and I just think they are the most fantastic items, especially going into winter. I definitely long mine out through autumn, winter and a bit of spring as well. But not only are they a very classic item, you know, these have been around for decades. And I think they're going to be around for decades more but they are just such a useful item to dress up any outfit. You know, you can have a very inexpensive coat, a very simple plain outfit. You pop one of these on top and it instantly makes your look just so much more fancy and elevated looking. I adore them and um, I have them in quite a few colors. I have a pink one, I have this stone colored one, I have the classic camel checked one. I recommend them all, it just kind of depends on the colors you gravitate towards when getting dressed but the quality is lovely they've worn very very well not high maintenance at all incredibly soft and 
I just think they're magical. So would definitely recommend. These are, I think, 390 pounds um, for price. You can often find them on sale though, so I would definitely wait it out for a discount code if you can. But yeah, would definitely recommend and would definitely prioritize repurchasing if I had to start all over again. Next up is Vintage Chanel, and I don't have a huge amount of Vintage Chanel, albeit some of my early pieces may be classified as Vintage Chanel because they are a little bit older, um, but if you are interested in Chanel and love the aesthetic, don't want to pay kind of new in-store prices, I would say vintage is a great place to start looking because you do get better value for money and the quality is fantastic. I have um, a kind of large tote here and it is stuffed to the brim um, because I want to keep it shaped. It's stuffed so much I can't even close it. Um, but I will take all the packaging out and I will kind of show you what it looks like. I got this when I went to Japan and I just love it. It's very, very old indeed. Um, I'm not sure how old, I'm guessing it must be 30 years old or something like that. Um, but it still looks really, really great. You can tell the quality on it as well. And I would say even with my very early Chanel bags that I bought, that I bought pre-loved, so were already older when I bought them, the quality of the leather is fantastic. They really do stand the test of time. And it's just a really nice way of getting that Chanel look, getting, a piece of Chanel history as well without spending you know eight thousand pounds on a bag that you'll have to buy from the store today and I just think they're wonderful you know I think it's such a beautiful piece the craftsmanship is just gorgeous and it's just a really really elegant style which again doesn't date so I do think vintage Chanel is worth it if that's your thing obviously it's not going to be everyone's cup of tea I love Chanel and the overall look um, and so for me this has been a great buy and definitely a really nice option if you didn't want to pay today's retail price And then last but not least, the item that I would absolutely reprioritize are my Gianmuto Rossi pumps. I have spoken quite a bit about these before, but I adore them and I do think they are 100% worth the money. And this is even with the knowledge that, you know, there's nothing particularly striking about the style of the shoe. You can get cheaper options, but if your budget does extend to it, I do think that these are worth it just because of the quality, the craftsmanship and how comfortable they are and also how durable they are as well. You know, I have worn mine to death and they still look so great and I have quite a few pairs in my collection now. So I have my block heel ones here. I own these in the black as well. These are in the kind of um, almondy nude color, I guess. I also have the same style with the stiletto heel. And then I do also have the navy ones in the stiletto heel as well. And these are so comfortable. It really does help that they are suede. So you do just mold to your feet. I do, um, or I did, um, spray mine with Scotch Guard, so they've done pretty well in terms of just general wear and tear. No marks or scuffs or anything like that. A very classic, elegant shape, so they go with literally everything. If you watch any of my fashion videos, you will have seen these shoes so many times because it's pretty much all I wear. They get worn every single week. I'm still wearing them now, like seven and a half months pregnant, because they're that comfortable and I just love them to bits. Um, so would definitely recommend. I do think they're worth the money. Yes, a splurge, but I think you're getting amazing, amazing quality. So that is it for this video, guys. I hope that you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comment section below if you agree or you disagree with my picks. Let me know what you would pick if this was your list. I would love to hear about it. If you enjoyed the video, please give us a thumbs up. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in my next one. Bye, guys.